Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. If you have encounters of your own you'd like to share, check out the description box below, where you'll find the email sstorysubmissions at gmail.com, where you can send in your submissions to be read on the channel. You can also send in your fan emails. I love hearing from you guys. Southwest of Eagle, now Eagleton, McCurtain County, Oklahoma, on the 13th of May, 1849. A person called One-Eyed Bascom, a hunter-trapper, saw a strange critter in the swamp that resembled what we would now call a Bigfoot. On to the next one. Sometime during 1915, Mr. Crum King was returning home from a dance southeast of Wan and Nawada County in Oklahoma when he saw a hairy wild man near the gate of a house. The creature was five to six feet tall and his arms were stretched out. The chest was four feet wide and hairy all over. The creature stood like a man and not like a bear. Mr. King fled. This was the first of many hairy humanoid sightings in the area around here, leading to peak years in the 1970s. On to the next one. In April of 1926, a hairy humanoid was seen in Goodwater in McCurtain County in Oklahoma. The witness was a doctor who saw the man-like creature in the headlights of his Model T Ford as it ran across the lane. The color of this hairy humanoid was unknown. Previously, there had been four airship sightings around here in 1897. On the 19th of April, at Atlanta, Texas, an airship swooped a farmer. Just before the 22nd of April, a train conductor near Human, Texas, met the occupants of a landed airship who gave him a tour of it. Also, on the 22nd of April, at McKinney Bayou, Arkansas, Judge Lawrence E. Brine met three Japanese-looking humanoids who showed him through an airship, and on the 16th of June, a great airship with wings and searchlights was seen above Marshall, Texas. On to the next one. Also, during 1926, two hunters and their dog saw a big, black, hairy ape man in a clearing near the Mountain Fork River in the Wachita Mountains in McCurtain County in Oklahoma. The hunter shouted, and it ran away. They sent the dog after the man-beast, and after one hour, the dog was found almost torn in two. 1926 was a very big year for aggressive and hairy man-beast. This was McCurtain County's second reported sighting for the year. On to the next one. in Harmon County in Oklahoma. My mother and her sister were going to get the cows from the pasture to bring them to the barn. They had just gone through a shelter belt of trees into a clearing when they heard rustling like something moving in the trees. Thinking it was one of the cows, they turned around and saw a very tall, hairy creature running away from them. It was standing completely upright, running on two legs. Needless to say, they ran in the other direction. There were two witnesses, my mother and her sister. They had just walked through the belt of trees where the creature was. After the sighting, their father went to the place where they had seen the creature and found a large flattened area that looked like a large animal had been lying there. Also, some of the neighboring farmers reported seeing large tracks on their farms that they could not identify around the same time. 
The area is gently rolling hills, lots of tree belt and brush, very sandy soil. On to the next one. In Wilburton County in Oklahoma, 13 miles from Wilburton, Miss Zorna Green of Pryor, Oklahoma, Virginia M., Imberson, and Ben Corslin saw a creature walking upright like a man with long arms like an ape, with hair all over, walking by a pond near a house. Coslin, a First Nation, also saw it hanging over his fence. Green's sister almost put her hand on a large hairy leg while picking blackberries. The men of the community went after the thing in a deserted mine shaft. The dogs wouldn't go after it. On to the next one. This was in Tulsa County in Oklahoma. I had two girlfriends spending the night. It was a hot summer evening, and we were lying across the bed instead of with our heads by the headboard, with the window open to catch the breeze. We were talking and laughing as young girls do, looking out the window occasionally. At approximately midnight, we had settled down some and were just quietly talking about what we had done that day. My mother and sister were sleeping in an adjacent bedroom, and we were trying not to wake them. We heard something outside, and the three of us braced up to see if we could determine what it was. First, it was just footsteps we heard. Then, the bushes in front of the window moved, shook, and then a large, hair-covered face rose in the window. The head was huge, and my first thought was it was an ape but I realized it wasn't. My two friends rolled away from the window and began crying. I was so completely frozen with fear that I could not move. There was only a screen and a few inches separating me from this creature, and I live to this day with that face etched in my memory. The eyes especially staring directly at me and the smell of something musky. I slowly was able to move and turned and began screaming hysterically. My mother ran into the room, turned the light on, and we ran out to the living room. We began describing the creature to her, and she called the police. They came to our house, searched the area, and never found a thing. The experience changed me forever. I tell all of my grandkids about the story, and one of my grandsons encouraged me to put it online, so here it is. The description of Bigfoot that I've heard over the last few years fit the creature I saw face to face, and I will never forget it. It was around midnight. There was a small light on a nightstand. There was a light in the yard about 40 feet away, as well as a full moon. On to the next one. In Blaine County in Oklahoma, Roger Butcher saw a non-human primate creature like a gorilla running across a road at night. It had a long beard and dark colored fangs. On to the next one. In El Reno in Canadian County in Oklahoma, a farmer found the door to its chicken coop ripped off and lying on the ground. On the surface of the door, and inside the coop, handprints were found that were seven inches long by five inches wide. Several chickens were missing. The door was shipped to zoologist Lawrence Curtis, the director of the Oklahoma City Zoo, who did not know what they were from. The handprints were like a gorilla's, but more like a man's. The thumb was crooked inward, either from being deformed or previously injured. Also in Canadian County in Oklahoma, a man tried to capture a chimpanzee-like creature by feeding it. He was unsuccessful. They are not stupid. On to the next one. In Lawton in Comanche County in Oklahoma, at 11 p.m., Mr. C. Edward Green and his wife were driving home along Lake Avenue when they saw a strange figure on the side of the road. A non-human humanoid 
was seen with a long beard. It was stooped, and the beard began unusually high. At 11.15 p.m., Mr. Green saw the same humanoid staring into the window of his apartment. Then he saw the humanoid with a glazed expression crouch down on a walkway. It seemed disoriented and was barefooted and six feet tall. When it saw Mr. Green, it jumped 15 feet with no effort. That same day in Lawton, at 11.10 p.m., a group of passers-by saw a monkey-like figure running down a street. The monkey-like figure was dodging cars and running behind bushes. At 11.30, it was seen by soldiers leaving a grocery store. The following night, at 11 p.m., the humanoid with a long beard was seen again. It had a glazed expression and seemed disoriented. Donald Child, 36, who had a heart condition, stepped into his backyard after having heard a sound when he came upon a humanoid trying to drink out of an empty pond. When it saw Donald and sprung from a squatting position and jumped 12 feet across the pond. This creature was fast, and the shock of it gave Donald a heart seizure. There were 20 other individual witnesses well in that same period. On to the next one. The Comanche tribe covered a rather large range of Texas and Oklahoma. They also lived throughout some of the other neighboring states just west and north of these regions in nearby New Mexico, Kansas, and Colorado. From the book Fossil Legends of the First Americans by Adrian Mayer, Moo Pitts is described as a terrifying 12-foot-tall cave-dwelling hairy giant. A Comanche medicine woman named Sanapia relates that Moo Pitts is a lot like Bigfoot. She described the creature as a very tall, hairy giant with big feet. She notes that this creature also has similarly described foul smell, so often associated with Bigfoot and Sasquatch from so many other non-tribal and tribal accounts. From the book Giant, Cannibals, and Monsters by Kathy Moskowitz Drain is an account from Daniel A. Becker in May of 1940. According to Becker, the Comanche had to deal with cave giants taking buffalo every so often, which the Comanche had also hunted. The buffalo became scarce with so many different tribes all hunting the same animal for meat. Then, with the coming of the white men, who would also organize buffalo hunt, it became even more difficult to appease this giant's insatiable appetite for the same meat, as it became almost impossible to acquire enough buffalo to also appease the giant, the Indians held council. They decided to give the giant cows to eat instead of buffalo, which by that time were far more plentiful than buffalo. As it was agreed, the giant was able to settle with cow for a short time. In rather large numbers, however, instead of buffalo which it was used to eating, the cow diet did not agree with the giant for long, as is noted from the book. He became increasingly irritable and nervous and menacing. As the story mentions, the giant decided to eventually move on to the larger mountain range further west. This could mean that the giant eventually moved towards the direction of the Rocky Mountain, where there would most likely be a more abundant supply of wild game and other food sources that were also far less hindered by man. As for the cow meat, which did not agree with the giant, I've also wondered, who wants to have to bail through seven stomachs filled with digested food, undigested food, or food that is still digesting to get to a much smaller piece of meat, usually still described today as being just a liver or a kidney, this same dietary observation or suggestion for Bigfoot Sasquatch has also been noted among other Native American tribes. Ojibwe 
natives to Canada's Middle Northwest Territories region, as well as neighboring portions of the U.S. The French, who were among some of the area's first missionaries and trappers, were also allies to the Ojibwe. The Ojibwe had probably derived the name Rougarou from the French name Lougarou, which means werewolf. This observation has also been noted before by university professors such as Lauren Coleman and Jeff Meldrum. The name Rougarou apparently shows a historical exchange of information between the Ojibwe and the French in an entity they had shared in common belief with one another. This also helps to explain in more detail some of the similarities which the werewolf would later have in common with the Bigfoot Sasquatch. For instance, the popular belief of the werewolf is that of a man-beast which is often sighted near townships and villages in the October light of a full moon. It is sometimes described to eat the liver from some of its victims. These are observations which modern research has also led to conclude about Bigfoot and Sasquatch. That the Sasquatch is drawn down during the colder parts of the year to lower elevations and closer to areas where most people live. The sightings are very common during the month of October, and that the Sasquatch is a predator, which is also known to eat the insides of animals. Could it be that some European suggestions of the werewolf are actually that of a Bigfoot or Sasquatch-like creature told among the Ojibwe in North America from over 400 years ago? Another familiar name among the Ojibwe in reference to Bigfoot, is Wendigo. The 1992 book, Indian Names on Wisconsin's Maps, by Virgil J. Vogel, tells more about the Ojibwe, as well as Swampy Cree and Ottawa, fears associated with the Wendigo. In the great northern reaches of Hudson's Bay, Canada, here is some of what the book says. Wendigos were a race of giant cannibals who were believed by the Ojibwe and Ottawa Indians to inhabit an island in Hudson's Bay and were universally feared. The Mike Dixon Kennedy book titled Native American Myth and Legend, an A to Z of People and Places, specifies the definition among the Ojibwe of the same being as the giant ice monster who prowls the woods in winter looking for people to eat. According to the Bigfoot Field Research Organization website, in the pre-Columbian and early American legends of Bigfoot-like beings section, there is the Ojibwe belief that Bigfoot Sasquatch is a physical creature that is often seen by people in times of danger to the environment. Much like stories from African natives of the gorilla, the Ojibwe have also had some fairly recent sightings within the area close to their Grassy Knoll Indian Reservation, as seen on Sasquatch Attack 2, episode of History Channel's 2008 Monster Quest TV series. In University of Southern Maine professor Lauren Coleman's book, Bigfoot, The True Story of Apes in America, there is a reference to what the Ojibwe Indians refer to as Memeguico or Memeguesi. These creatures are described as monkey-like, about the size of a preteen, covered in hair, and sometimes described as having a flat nose. Really, they fit the description of what might be considered to be Bigfoot or Sasquatch Young. Interesting how so many Native American tribes have descriptions of what seems to indicate a breeding population of these animals. If you have encounters of your own you'd like to share, check out the description box below, where you'll find the email sstorysubmissions at gmail.com, where you can send in your submissions to be read on the channel. You can also send in your fan emails. I love hearing from you guys. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day. So be sure to hit that notification bell and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much and until next time, bye!